Acho que já estamos em direto. Hello, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed attendees. Thank you for joining us today for this webinar um, with the title How Artificial Intelligence is Revolutionizing the Travel Industry. Uh, I'm honored to be your host for this event, and I'm excited to discuss the profound impact of uh, that AI is having, having in the, the world of travel. Over the years, the travel industry has witnessed the significant transformations thanks the large part to advancement of the, in the technology. Among these advancements, the artificial intelligence has emerged as a game changer, with shaping the way we plan, book, and experience the travel. Let's dive into some key areas where AI is revolutionizing the travel industry, like personalization, chatbots, virtual assistants, pricing optimization, maybe demons and safety and security. Uh, the, the AI is uh, driven systems are being used to enhance the security at airports and hotels and our personal security, language translation, and this is are just a few examples of how AI is reshaping the travel industry, but the possibilities are virtually endless. Now, without further ado, uh, I'm delighted to introduce our guest speaker, Mr. João Freitas, Director of Growth and Partnerships at Host Hotel Systems. João uh, is an expert in the field, and he will share the valuable insights into how the leveraging the AI to enhance the guest experience, optimize operations, and drive growth in the hospitality sector. João, the floor is yours. Olá, hello, hello, hola for everyone that speaks Portuguese. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you today, and thank you so much for the invitation to Walters and all the team from Nest. Um, so, well, I will spend around 40 to 45 minutes talking a little bit about um, artificial intelligence um, applied to, to, the, to the tourism. And the way that I, I like to do these presentations, first, of course, introduce myself, second, go a little bit um, like an overview about the main concepts, like meaning 10 minutes maximum. And after that, speaking about the wonderful startups and projects that are doing amazing stuff and what are the trends for 2024. OK, I guess that uh, you'll be enjoying this webinar. And of course, if you have any question, um, I'll be more than happy to reply um, during the webinar or after. OK, so well, introducing myself, I'm Jean. And as Walter was saying, um, I'm the director of growth and partnership at Host Hotel System, which is basically the biggest uh, technology provider for hospitality and tourism in general in Portugal. Um, I've been working in this sector in the last couple of years, always around technology. Uh, so, well, we have a couple of brands that I've been representing in the last couple of years, and most of them are related with BI, with AI, and of course with the operation software. Um, so, well, as I tend to, to make as a joke, I know the map of Europe, not uh, because of the cities itself, but because I know most of the the addresses of the hotels and the hotel chains. So I guess that uh, it will be interesting to speak a little bit more than what we have been doing about what our client and what I've been seeing in the market. Um, and well, I guess that the most interesting topic here is that when I started to do this kind of webinars, back in the days, like four to five years ago, uh, and I was speaking about artificial intelligence and what was happening. Well, they were not that attended. So meaning we, we were not having that much people uh, watching us or even when we had most of the people thought it was like for the future, for 2030. <laughs> so it's quite interesting um, to start this, these webinars uh, with a quote in this case from Klaus Schwab. Um, that wrote a, an amazing book called The Fourth Industrial uh, Revolution. And basically, it was explaining that the way that we are seeing nowadays this fourth uh, part of the, the industrial revolution um, will probably change completely the way uh, that we relate to each other, that we work, and well, uh, looking for our own uh, industry, the way that we also uh, see uh, the tourism. But well, going back in the days in the when you were in high school, I guess that most of you were um, learning um, the three first revolutions. 
And the first one, as you know, it was everything about the mechanical power. So, well, amazing times at the uh, at the moment. We spoke a lot in the school about the stream power, the railroads, and changed completely the world. Well, probably started to be a little bit more open, I guess. After that, we moved to the second revolution almost uh, an hundred years uh, after uh, with the mass production. Well, you, everyone knows Ford example, right? So amazing times and everything was about um, or around the, electric the electricity. So it was a good moment. And again, one other years after we had the third uh, revolution with all the automation process uh, starting and well, more than everything rest everything about the laptops and the, 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 the computer powers. So what is the, the, the interesting topic around? In the third revolution, it was around uh, 1969, right? So if you see, we have around like 50 years after and we are leaving the Ford revolution. And it is Ford revolution. There are so many topics uh, that we need to look at that is just interesting. So in this webinar, we could be speaking about AI, robotics, big data, BI, we could uh, speak about uh, virtual reality, augmented reality. So there are so many uh, topics that is really interesting um, to attend and to look. And of course, what I really want to pass to you is that most of these um, technologies can be already implemented in your business because, well, there are so many companies, so many startups attending that, that actually what you should look at is what can we use or what can you use in your business that could be making you a little bit more efficient, faster, and of course, by the, of the, uh, by the end of the day, uh, with your uh, profit margins better, okay? But well, as I said, defining the concepts I always like to make it super easy. What is AI? Well, super easy, capability of a machine to imitate an intelligent human behavior. And it's very important because we tend to, 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 to talk about AI and everyone uh, is right now looking to the chat GPT and all these kind of concepts. And we tend to forget that what we are as a human wonderful to do is to think. And I love to think, but actually I don't love to do um, things in a replicated way. So when I need to do several and several times. So what is very important to you is to understand that when you talk about artificial intelligence nowadays, we are talking more and more about how can we have uh, machines doing things that we were spending so many times, so much time that would make us less efficient. So there are so many applications of AI. You can use AI to work as a predictive models. You can use AI to unlock your marketing strategies. You can use AI to simply chat with your clients and automatize all the customer service. So the, the most important part for me is that we tend to um, make, let's say, a match between AI and automation. And a lot of people are still afraid of these concepts. As I tend to say, these concepts should be as good or as bad as you want to use it, as the case studies that you want. Well, back in the days, four or five years ago, I was working in a chatbot provider for hospitality. I never forget, I, I, my hometown is Viana do Castel. Well, for people that is not from Portugal, is right on top of Portugal. Quite beautiful, by the way, you should visit. And Viana do Castel was an amazing city. At the time, I was trying to sell these chatbots for hotels, okay? Amazing times. And I never forget most of my personal friends that were the directors or the owners because I'm from there, right? And I was doing the demos, most of them online of the chatbot, replying to the queries of the guests, super simple. And most of them were asking me, come on, John, are you thinking that I will be automatizing this service? Are you crazy? Because hospitality is all about people. How can I do it? And I will say, come on, you, you right now you are not replying. So, First thing, are you able to reply with a human or not? If not, probably you have already one chance to solve it. Second part, do you believe that 80% of the questions are always about the same topic? So actually, the people that are replying by written are doing exactly the same every single question or almost everything. Because when you ask, what is the check-in time? Well, the answer is always the same, just change the language. And well, talking about the language, most of us talk two, three, four languages but we don't speak like an android, right? So imagine if you have a question in German, 
personally I don't speak, so I cannot reply in a proper way. So probably the chatbot is better than you doing it. And well, back in the times, they were not buying us at all, okay? Suddenly the pandemic started, everyone was understanding that actually, well, interacting with people is good. And I was seeing two amazing case studies. First, like super good hotels and hotel chains, going to the chatbot fields and thinking about what can we automatize, what can we not automatize. And for them it was fundamental to have space to have human behaviors or human uh, people interacting and uh, chatting. Fantastic. And I had another one that were super bad, meaning that they were there and saying, come on, I want the chatbot to automatize 100% of my questions. Well, guys, I have bad news. When you have a bot automatizing 100%, well, you know, they are imitating a human behavior. So if you have a chatbot, and back in the days, of course, uh, we were not provided or we were not using the, the technology from uh, um, ChatGPT and all these new uh, solutions, of course, the solution will not be that good, right? So for me, the most important part is please, be sure that when you talk about artificial intelligence, first you look about what are your main problems, what can we do, how can we solve them. Just to give you an example, most of the clients that we have in the marketing fields and are sending campaigns for the clients, building uh, emails, newsletters, even social media posts. Come on, uh, I'm super energetic, but sometimes I'm blocked. So of course, artificial intelligence helps me a lot, even when I want to make some jokes, I just tell what are the jokes that I want to do, right? And the, the text makes much more sense. But well, talk about the artificial intelligence is super simple, but of course it's surrounded by a lot of concepts, such as IoT. And well, what I did, I started to insert here some logos, are not from my company, okay? Are just amazing Portuguese startups that you should look at that are working in this field. So what is IoT? It's always about how can you make the well, the 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 all the, the the different spaces that we have a little bit more, uh, let's say, uh, intelligence if we can connected if you want. So by the end of the day, what you want to do is we are generating a lot of data and a lot of spaces can just be automatized if you make them connected with each other. So IoT devices could be help you a lot to use the power of AI to, to do several things. Just to give you an example, if you are in a hotel um, and for example, you are in a hot space during the summer, what you do or most of the people will do will be like waking up, turning on the, the AC, uh, going to the window and open it, uh, putting the AC on the 16 degrees and go out. Guys, what will happen? Super easy. By the end of the day, you still not have the 16 degrees because the window was open. It's too hot outside, right? The AC was turned on all the day. So the bill will be a little bit higher to the uh, hotel. And actually you'll be upset because even if you reach the 16 is not a desired temperature because it's too cold, okay? So what can we do with the, these amazing startups? Well, one of the things will be sim su super, imp su super simple. We just go to the AC, we put some kind of rules and make sure that you never lose that uh, good temperature interval. So by the end of the day, you are using again, artificial intelligence, not only to control your bill, but also to make sure that the experience for the, the guest is good as well, okay? We talk about also concepts surrounding um, the AI, and we have everything around augmented reality and virtual reality. Nowadays, we know most of the cities are a little bit crowded, right? A lot of museums are super crowded. So what can you do? You can make sure that you are improving experiences in the way that you are making the content a little bit more digital. And again, there are wonderful startups around. I inserted one here, Explore, it's also Portuguese which basically is uh, working in this field and can uh, make sure that your museum experience, it's good being with augmented or with virtual reality. So for people that don't know the difference, augmented reality, you have literally a real world and you are adding, let's say, some kind of uh, virtual contents, okay? Um, for people that as some, some, some kids, uh, probably you, you remember Pokemon Go at the time, so 
the kids were with the with the cell phones and they were singing the the Pokemons. I guess that is the right name uh, in the streets. Actually, this is an example of augmented reality. And you have virtual reality as an example. If you start using that glasses, that watches, uh, that basically block you from another life or for the real life and are putting you in a in a different kind of world, let's say. So again, could be super interesting when there is a rainy day and you cannot visit a specific place. Can be interesting to try to promote uh, a specific space, even when people is just trying to think about where should they go. So I guess it again are really good concepts that you can uh, look at. And well, talking about another kind of topics that are more and more um, in our uh, days, especially in the tourism industry that is evolving a lot, we can talk about the CRM spaces. Again, in the past, in a lot of other different industries, uh, we are seeing the CRMs, the customer relationship management softwares um, around. But actually, when we are looking for uh, agencies, to restaurants, to uh, hotels and chains, we were not uh, seeing any kind of solutions in that field. Why could be a CRM interesting in talking about AI again um, in our uh, industry? First, because we know that it's so important to know our client. We are always talking about the slow tourism and these concepts around making sure that we know the people. So the CRM can help you a lot. And well, if you start to focus in the client instead of the reservations itself, probably start to make some predictions. Okay, example, imagine that you open a hotel probably you want to know exactly what are the chances of a specific profile to cancel the reservation. You want to know exactly what are the chances, the odds of that specific client um, gets a, a drink in the bar or goes to your restaurant or, well, you, you want to use these kind of algorithms that are around to make sure that you really know who is your, well, Carol Smith has inserted here. Okay, and that can be super useful because you make sure that your client probably will be more, uh, well, revenue oriented for you. And second, you'll be happier and happier, which is, I guess, your main goal um, by the end of the day. And well, talking about the CRMs and the last, uh, well, concept that I inserted, I, I started my talk talking a little bit about uh, the chatbots or the virtual assistants. Um, of course, this is a space where everyone is right now. Right, so I guess that there are no websites in the tourism industry from the the biggest brands that are not using the chatbots to make sure that people can get answers as fast as uh, they need. By the way, just a tip: if there is someone from the restaurant industry, guys, you know how much money you are losing because you are not being able to well pick up the phone, and if you don't have a, a space to chat with the clients. How do you expect that people can book with you right now, right? So there are so many good solutions in the market focusing 100% again in the restaurant, in the agencies, in the hotels that you should look at this concept. Again, not looking as let's try to automatize everything, but look at how can we automatize parts of the questions that we know that are always the same. Again, looking for the hospitality industry itself, we know that around 80% uh, of the questions are about 20 to 25 uh, topics. So, well, it's always about the same, okay? And well, what I propose here for the next 20 minutes is to look a little bit for the trends for the 2024. Most of them are oriented by AI, so I guess it makes a lot of sense to try to understand what can be included in your strategy. So first things, make sure that you know that right now tourism is always about pleasure. So if we talk about pleasure, what can you do in an artificial intelligence perspective um, to, 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 to pressure in a good perspective or to push the experience of the guest uh, higher? First thing, if you know that people are right now booking more and more in the websites, you can start working in chatbot solutions. You can start working upselling solutions powered by AI that can promote you exactly the right package to you. Just to give an example, just to give you an example, if you know that personally I like to play tennis with my girlfriend, why you are trying to promote other things and just tell me that you have a tennis camp quite close, right? Because it would help you a lot. Okay. If you know that I have kids or if I don't have, 
probably you know that the focus should change, right? So the idea here is to make sure that you have more and more um, empowered by AI chatbots, uh, upselling and upgrades uh, tools. You have more and more solutions to make sure that people are really enjoying your stay. And guys, don't forget any single city in the world has different meanings and different strategies and they should have, OK? Because otherwise you'll be just one more solution, one more auto, one more agency, and we are doing always the same. So don't forget AI wonderful to imitate human behaviors, but you need always to add something that is a little bit more unique. OK, other trends talking about this reforming of the travel industry, talking about the contactless, you know, more and more the industry is going to a contactless space and we still see a lot of hotels and a lot of travel agencies, a lot of restaurants struggling with these payments. What is creating these contact class uh, journeys is making sure that from the moment that the person can book until the moment that they can leave, you don't need to use uh, the, your credit card several times. You are basically doing in a safe perspective all the management uh, management of the money. Again, in, uh, in Europe, you have so many good companies working in this field that there is no reason to not start implementing these contactless payments around. And again, uh, even in Portugal, we are having our main providers uh, working with the Google Pays and Apple Pays and all these kind of uh, solutions. So right now uh, you should look at uh, that as well. Third point, we talk about AI and you know, um, when you look to a kid, it's quite interesting. Um, a couple of uh, weeks ago, I was with my with a small cousins, and one of the my cousin uh, was trying to use YouTube on the smart TV. Okay, so of course he doesn't know how to read. It's part of the age, right? So super interesting part. Instead of trying to write something, he just started to speak to the television. And guys, actually, he was able to go to the right space in YouTube and watch the video that he was looking at. So what is the trend here? With the, these new generations, we are seeing more and more people, instead of writing, starting to say, to speak, okay? To look at on the Google uh, search, to look at on the video spaces, so to look for everything, okay? Why this is important for you? Because right now the algorithms behind the search are also starting to look more and more to what is speaking and not what is being just written. So what is the most relevant for you? Start using, of course, all this knowledge about what is being speaking, starting to insert that in your SEO strategy and probably you start to get a little bit better results. And of course, we are talking about the voice search. The same applies to the voice control where you have more and more devices powered by AI that are just speaking. And you know, you have uh, probably at your home, these Alexis of this life, right? And you already understand how important could be and how powerful it could be even for managing your own home. Imagine now to your business, okay? Of course, we spoke as well about virtual reality at Vet and Metaverse. Well, I'll not speak about Metaverse because I guess met that, that is a super trendy topic. Everyone talks about it, so <laughs> I guess it is not that the moment to do it. But talking about re virtual reality, I can tell a story. Um, a couple of years ago, I went to a museum of a stadium. I will not tell the stadium because otherwise it's about football and it's, not, it's just about the stadium. And actually, in the day after, there would be a match there. So we could not literally go to the field. Okay, so what the museum was proposing was wonderful. They uh, inserted me uh, uh, watches like this one, okay, uh, glasses, sorry, as this one. And um, basically, I was able to understand how could be the, the sensation of entering uh, in the, the field, understanding how many people was attending, feeling uh, personally that I was a player of my own football team. So. It was incredible. I could never feel something similar, right? So again, when you talk about virtual reality, metaverse is always about how could that be interesting for an experience. And you know, especially when you are talking about uh, European countries where there are so many landscapes, so many uh, spaces to visit, some of them are not 
having people there to explain you, right? You don't have guides to help you. So sometimes that kind of uh, solutions could be interesting to make, well, the, our landscapes a little bit more interesting. Probably you could try to promote a little bit more this kind of uh, monuments, and that could be relevant as well in the future to um, get more uh, trendy, to get more people for other places, okay? We talk also about eco traveling for the 2024. Uh, I guess it is actually a trendy uh, moment to talk about eco something, okay? And of course, uh, even our uh, most relevant solutions in the market and empowered by AI like Google are looking more and more uh, to that. Actually, the only thing that I said it here is an example of Google auto ads uh, showing you how relevant could be the eco certifications and all these kind of um, fields for our industry in the next year. So please make sure that you attend it as well. And well, topic number uh, six, not that um, uh, we should not forget at all about that, is all, always about customization. And again, customization is always about AI, AI, AI. You know, tourism is always about people but we have lack of people in the majority of the, the countries, uh, especially again in Europe, to attend people, to speak with people, to spend time with our guests. So talking about customization is always about how can I get the most relevant data of the guest? How can I treat it in the right perspective? And how, how can I customize all the communication, all the, the journey to the right client? So again, super simple example. Uh, a couple of uh, months ago, I went to, um, to a, an event, a presidential event in Alicante in Spain, and I was there to speak about, well, actually more or less the same topics. And when I was just arriving to my room, I had a letter there saying, hey, Juan, it's wonderful to have you here in this specific event. And after they spent like two lines speaking about myself, meaning they went to my LinkedIn profile and they wrote something quite quite smart and quite related with me. So guys, this is an example of customization because why? Probably in the CRM, I was tagged as going to speak in a specific event, which was easy because it was just the right call that I was selecting, right? Um, and from that moment, the guest relations just wrote a letter, like literally wrote in, or writing in this case, and I was feeling that was just for me. I was feeling really uh, important at the moment. And of course, after that, all the rest of the, the experience in the hotel, I was already open to that, okay? And talking about the experience in the hotel, well, probably I, you were expecting to having me saying that you should spend all the, your uh, investments um, for implementing robots and all these kind of um, new technologies. I guess that depends, okay? There are, of course, businesses where these kind of concepts will be wonderful because you will be perceived as super techy, super different, but probably there are so many others that don't make sense. But, you know, it's always good when you have uh, your pancakes uh, provided by a, a robot or where you have your coffee provided or your drinks, and we are seeing more and more that. The good news, since you are implementing more and more, or your competitors are implementing more and more, I guess that even the prices are getting better to you. And well, talking about robots, and just to make sure that I don't speak too much, I just inserted here a video that could be interesting for you to understand uh, a couple of years ago, an implementation of a robot uh, in an Alibaba hotel. Again, this is like a super old, like six or seven years. So I guess that uh, you'll be understanding that most of the things that you were, or that you'll be seeing here, you can implement nowadays in any of your uh, concepts. So let's just see the video.
for people that were just seeing a robot trying to do a drink or something similar, I tend to say that if I didn't have a robot to, to cook at home, probably I will not survive. So guys, <laughs> this is literally making a science or of all the aspects that you need. But again, could be interesting as a marketing perspective or could be interesting as an efficient process. OK, you need to define where you want to implement these kind of solutions. But again, this is an example of an Alibaba hotel um, uh, in China, but like back in the days. OK, so this is literally not new. So talking about then about AI and I guess that we are almost almost um, in the end of the, the concepts. For me, the most relevant part is to understand that we need to make sure that all the experience is customized. We are in an in industry. It's about people and experiences. So again, my advice in terms of implementing AI is about making sure that you know what are your problems. You look about how AI could help to solve your own problems. And after that, you start to implement. And don't forget, is always about also internally having an internal champion, someone that really look to these kind of solutions because the solutions are wonderful these days. But if you don't have someone that are passionate about it, if they are not responsible for the implementation of it, will not happen. You know, especially for people that have companies with more like five years, 10 years, 15 years, you know, people that are working with you probably don't want to, to change that much. OK, no one really likes changes. OK. So implementing this kind of solutions should be one by one, looking for the problems, looking for your, of course, your budget, because some solutions are more expensive than others. But again, you need to have a process to implement. OK, well, if you see even the, the biggest groups working in the tourism sector, you have more and more the innovation figure, uh, the innovation uh, person, the innovation role, because it's the only way of making sure that we are just implementing technologies that really make sense for you in the right moment, in the right way. OK, and talking about the right moment in the right way, just a, a, a super simple uh, implementation that you could look at as well. Actually, there is a wonderful startup on the field called Uverse. It's about recognizing the recognition technology. So guys, everyone here probably already um, went to an airport. And if it's an international trip, probably you were being scanned your face and scanning your passport ID. And probably you understood that actually there was a lot of people that was doing exactly that role in the past. And they were not much more efficient. So what is being implemented more and more in the hotels space? Well, the recognition in terms of passports ID and um, the, as well with the faces with the OCR technologies. Again, you have amazing uh, examples, but just to understand how could be your guest experience, I'm doing my check-in in my home with my uh, cell phone. I just digitalize, let's say, it's not the right word, um, my passport ID, I check my face, and actually, literally, when I arrive the auto, people that is there, it's just speaking with me, trying to understand my needs, my problems, what I'm looking. I always tell the same story. Back in the days, like two or three years ago, again, I already told you during the pandemic, I, I was in my wonderful hometown, Viana do Castelo, and I needed to do a trip to Algarve. For people that are not from Portugal, it's like a nightmare from one side to the other. And if you go with a, a car, it's like quite far away. OK, so I spent a lot of hours driving, so I was super happy, as you can imagine. And I arrived to a five star hotel um, in uh, Algarve at the time. And actually, it was not my first time because he was my client at the time. I was already working in the industry. OK, so I never forget. It was like 11 p.m. And the person that was doing my check in spent like five minutes uh, just doing all this digitalization of the documents. First part and second talking about what I needed to do in the, 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 the day after in terms of all this, the experience that you can imagine because I was in a resort. Well, there was just two problems. First was 11 p.m. and I will leave at 7. So I will spend a lot of time in the hotel, as you can imagine. And second part, I was spending 
so many time working uh, on the bureaucracy and not speaking. So meaning I was not speaking. I was just saying yes or no, yes and no, and yes and no. So how do you feel that the experience could be good? Of course not. I didn't enjoy, right? I was actually starting to be a little bit upset because I was not expecting that. Okay? But well, just to, um, to, to close this um, trends for the 2024 and talking about how AI and all these concepts can revolutionize your uh, business, you have again IoT devices that you can start to implement to control how many people are attending a specific restaurant. So imagine a super simple case study. You have a resort, you have three, three four restaurants, and actually, if you can just have super simple devices telling you how many people it are in specific restaurants, you can suggest, for example, to Walter that he said to go to the restaurant A, go to the restaurant B because it's empathy and it's easier and the experience would be exactly the same, actually probably better, okay? So you can control people, you can control ACs, you can control whatever you want. So the part here is again, how can you automatize? How can you give the power to the people to decide? But at the end of the day, how can you control your own building? And especially for the tourism industry or for people that are um, managing buildings, I guess that again, the IoT will be more and more relevant to you in the next couple of years. And well, the last topic is always about NFTs. I guess it's uh, in the next couple of years, you'll be uh, looking more and more about this topic. I really suggest you uh, to look to this uh, topic uh, because, uh, well, if we are talking about trends for the 2024, I guess it's for the second semester, that would be for sure um, the, the topic to look at, to attend. And again, I'm quite sure that there are still not uh, so many startups attending uh, these, um, this kind of field, but will be for sure um, in the next couple of months. So you should for sure search a little bit about um, this subject. So guys, I was spending 40 minutes uh, super fast giving a brief overview about what is AI and how AI can help you um, as a business or as a person trying to improve the guest experience. My last and my important advice, I guess, that is first look to this topic as something that is not for the 2030. It's for now, okay? Everyone is implementing, and you know uh, there is a, uh, an expression in Portuguese that is "candeia que vai à frente ilumina duas vezes," which is basically the meaning of if you go and you are the first, typically people tend to start watching you, and you are always the first going to the market, the, the leader, and being the leader is good, okay? So. Make sure that you start to implement strategies that makes you unique, that makes you different from what already exists. And I guess that AI could help you a lot because, well, there are a lot of space in tourism to improve. Most of the companies, especially the small and medium companies, are not um, investing that much in, in, in these kind of fields, but they should. Okay. Second part, my second advice, make sure that you find your um, champion, your, your personal internally to make this happen, literally, okay? It's very important to make sure that you are uh, looking for all the needs of your business, you can prioritize where you should invest, how can you do it, and of course, making sure that these uh, solutions are well implemented and again, makes you more efficient. And I guess that if you do this, or if you follow these two advices, um, I guess that you'll be quite successful and it will be quite interesting to, to look in the next couple of years for your business. Well, from my end, you have my email here. It was a pleasure to be with you. Uh, Walter, thank you so much again for the invitation. And I don't know if we have any kind of question that we uh, need to look at. <laughs> Amazing, João. Thank, thank you very much for your contribution. Uh, for me, it's a very interesting team because in my home, I have a lot of artificial intelligence <laughs> and I use for, for the cooker, from the, the TV, from the air conditioning, all my house is uh, completed with the artificial intelligence and I think is really the future. And um, the NFTs for the, the the second semester of the 2024, I think they go and explode in the market. There is uh, no other way. <laughs> yeah, there is another way. Uh, if anyone has some questions, please use the Q&A. We, we have here the, some of people send me uh, messages from the Q&A. 
if you have some question to João, please. We have uh, more or less than three minutes, four minutes. But it's amazing. It's amazing, João. Thank you again for sharing your expertise and insights with uh, with us. Uh, for me, for me, it's truly inspiring to to see and to to know how the artificial intelligence is being put to practical uh, use in the hospitality industry because all the the people in all the SMEs uh, need to to see the the future of the artificial intelligence and not only the the side of the human resources. Uh, yeah. If we put the automation in the AI, we need less human resources. No, this is not true. Uh, uh, well, I, I don't say that could be uh, less yeah. people, but I, I'm not concerned with less people. I'm concerned about improving the conditions for people, right? So, of course, if we have people just doing things that are duplicated and uh, manual, probably even the salaries, the conditions do not improve over time. So actually, you want people controlling the machines, controlling and defining. Again, I know that I'm, well, good as a human to interact, to speak, to, well, uh, create some kind of empathy. Yeah. I know that the machine is not that good yet, okay? So I prefer to control it. Again, I, I know that sometimes I have good ideas, but if I have the first step uh, and lock it, it's much faster, right? Yeah. How many yeah. campaigns I can create in the same day? I, how fast I can do? Even super simple examples. If you go to the, your Gmail account right now, uh, Google are just telling you that you have an email that you should reply because mm -hmm. there are already 10 days delayed. So True. it's a super simple example. I'm not expecting having Google replying to for me, but I'm expecting Google telling me how wrong I is. I am. So again, a, a super simple example as, as well. You book a trip, um, a flight, for example, and you have Google sending you to your Google calendar the, mm -hmm. the timings and you have your uh, Google also telling you that the flight is delayed, so you should not leave home yeah. at that moment. So again, this is about empowering people because I'm talking about my personal life, but at the end of the day, this could be interesting for all the information that we need to take during the day. And most of us take so many decisions that if we are empowered, I guess it will be easier, yeah. we'll be more efficient, we'll be, well, more relevant in a, um, in a business perspective. So of course, our own role will improve uh, in, the, in the company. <laughs> true, true as well. Fantastic. We, we have here some questions. Uh, sure. I will publish the first one. Uh, the first one is from Sarah. Uh, they said, but the customer um, isn't also looking for a contact. Uh, find someone who gives a welcome with a smile. This is the, the question related with the human resources and the, the AI. Yeah, so uh, talking uh, talking about looking for a smile, I, I don't have any doubt, okay? The question is not about uh, putting people away, okay? The question is, if you are trying to make a question before doing your booking or your arriving, sometimes you don't find a human. There's no mm -hmm. human available. So first thing, AI could be helping you on that, trying to automatize in that moment. Second part, Yes, you are right. People sometimes look for other people to speak, which is wonderful. But if you are in a hotel, in a restaurant, sometimes you also have people that are not in the mood to go to the reception or just doing a call. So you need to find places for people to make questions, right? I always tell the same story. A couple of years ago, I, I, I love to tell stories, by the way. Uh, I was in a hotel chain during the pandemic, so wonderful. I was almost the, the only client in the in that hotel. Um, and suddenly the phone started to ring on the room. I never forget because I literally entered in the room like five minutes after or before, and I, I, I was just preparing myself. I didn't know the room, right? So when I was a person or when I had a person saying, hello, I'm blah, blah, blah from Hotel X, uh, how is the room? I was like, I don't know, right? If you tell me and if you send me a message saying exactly, uh, the, for example, what is the, the, the menus for the room or what are the, the experience for the party that day, I will enjoy much more. And again, I'm not impeding you of talking to clients. No, I'm just saying that there are moments that you should proactively be there and showing the guests that you can be there to interact. And again, 
most of the people don't want to go to the reception to talk with you. They want to talk with you and they really want to have a person speaking. But the point here is you just have people speaking if they have them available when it's needed, right? Not again to to, repl to, to reply to the, the questions that are always the same. Okay. True, true as well. The, the second question is from Paulo. Uh, what about the use of AI by the distribution, travel agents and tour operators? What is your opinion? Well, that, that is that is probably the hardest, right? Uh, so <laughs> again, the, the, when you talk about travel agencies, um, we have been seeing people um, or companies implementing AI to make sure that they could find the right trip, the right package. Okay, so AI could be interesting to make sure that somehow the guests, or in this case, the client, can find the right route, the right package, because most of the people go to an agency, they really don't know exactly what they want, right? Sometimes people go and say, I want to go to that country, or sometimes they say, even uh, less than that, they say, well, I want something like this. Well, but something like this changed a lot uh, according with the, the, the budget, according with how many people, uh, according with the times of the year. There are so many um, topics that can um, vary the, 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 the choice. So I guess that AI could be relevant more than everything to understand the client and to empower people, in this case, the person that was working at travel agencies to tell what is the right experience for that guest or that client and make uh, sure that everything happens in the right way. And second, uh, I guess for a travel agency it could be interesting AI as well for the during the experience, because you know uh, most of uh, the agencies work for destinations, international ones, far away, and sometimes have people to interact during 24 hours is difficult, right? So, and what do you do? Typically, you try to speak with the person that sold you the trip, and it's quite hard, right? So you can also start having some kind of um, spaces here to to, yeah. to insert AI, to interact, to make sure that could suggest, could be a little bit more proactive. I, th I guess it would be more or less in these moments, okay? Apart from that, again, if a person is going to your website as a travel agent is looking for the, the right trip, again, again, is the same uh, advice that I was giving as a, a person. You can send the people the right information, uh, uh, looking, for example, about from where they were coming, uh, what they are visiting, the minutes that they are spending in specific trips. So you can basically customize the the e-commerce experience with the, these amazing tools that are right now in the market. Okay, it's always about customization. Okay, again, mm -hmm. making sure that your travel agency is different and is not providing exactly the same. Because again, booking a flight, booking a hotel is not that difficult anymore. It's always about how can you make sure that people feel safe, feel secure, and feel that is being that will be a wonderful the experience. Uh, well, I have a question from Bernard, uh, my friend Bernard from Croatia. Um, what do you think? What are the the areas in the implementation of NFTs in the hotel industry? In the sorry, I lost for in the second. hotel industry. Uh, where they can be implemented? Are you mean? Yeah. Um, well, first again to to the to the to the interactions, right? To the to the chatting. I already told you. First thing. Second, to control the the spaces. I guess it is very important nowadays. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially to suggest check-in times, etc., because there are there are moments in the hotel experience that it's too crowded. Does it make sense? Okay, this is, will be for sure the the second part. Um, the third part, talking about AI for the upselling, because I really guess believe that most of the the hotels are focused too much on the rooms revenue and not in the the, the what we call the total revenue, so the rest. Uh, to generate, and that goes straight to the to the revenue management systems field, where for sure there are so many uh, space to grow uh, there. I guess as well to manage reputation, okay? Uh, because when you talk about reputation, you have two kind of hotels: the 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 ones that have one people to reply, wonderful, perfect for everything, and the ones that don't reply at all. But more than just replying or not replying, you also need to understand what is happening, what are um, even the the sentimentals of the people that are saying something about you, right? So I guess that that could be more or less the fields where you'll be covered. And again, 
the IoT devices will for sure explode because most of the the buildings are a little bit uh, older, like 10, 15, 20 years old, and we need to start including these kind of devices to control them, especially for the maintenance, for example, because super simple example, most of the times you don't know that there, there is a light in your room that is not working, okay? And probably no one will know because they are not uh, turning on uh, everyone, every, every light. So it's just some examples. So I guess experience for sure, maintenance for sure will be uh, spaces that will be growing. And again, all the, the price or the NIMIC price will be important more and more. Again, it's always about what do you do? What is the other uh, companies doing? How can you be uh, better performing? What are the right channels to be? What is the right prices? There are so many uh, things here to look at. I guess that will be the, the space where be more, uh, well, more things happening. And just a note, um, in terms of booking experience, I guess that will be a lot of new trends, uh, especially because the websites, the way that you are seeing the, um, the well, the, the, the bookings are exactly the same everywhere, right? So I guess that uh, you start to be more and more um, as an option, having people going to the booking engines and selecting exactly the right room that they want to have and like bidding for the right room, meaning, you know, the hotel industries are being sold as a category. So you are buying one uh, room from like six different or 10 different. So I believe that more and more that people will start to look by saying, I want to be in that one specific and I, I, I'm able to pay like 10 euros or 15 euros more to be in that one. So probably will be more about going again to the to the virtual reality to, to the uh, 3D in the websites and making sure that people can understand exactly where they want to stay, why, and again, bidding in the same category to, to have um, the specific space. I guess that will be more or less in that field. Yeah, great testimony. <laughs> uh, we have another question from Tiago André. <clears throat> yeah? For travel agencies, what is the most impactful low investment uh, technology in EI? In EI? Uh, that we sh that we should start using as soon as possible. In travel agencies, you were yeah. asking. Um, I guess it is about about again bookings, so uh, upselling solutions for sure, and chatbots. I guess it to be uh, the spaces where I will spend more time in this moment because in a travel agency is uh, I guess where you what you need to to get is data about who is your client to create the, the right packages. First thing, especially if you are small. Second one uh, is about making sure that you can be 24 hours uh, seven um, in, in in a good relationship uh, way. So I guess it again, chatbots, collecting data in the website, improving um, the app sellings, or in this case, understanding the client and trying to suggest the right uh, solution to you. I guess that would be more or less in this space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. We, we have another question from Jaime. Um, do you agree that one of the problems to implement AI in hospitality is concerned to the lack of training uh, on this subject? What are your <laughs> view or your opinion about this? <laughs> Wonderful question. <laughs> you know that I it also is, give trainings. So, well, first topic. I really believe that the tourism industry is not only for people that study tourism. Okay. <laughs> Why I'm saying that? I'm a, a huge fan of making sure that we have people from different fields working in different industries because I guess it's, um, well, there are always uh, new ideas popping up. Saying that, what we have been seeing, I, I always speak about the Portuguese market, are the main providers of education going to the students and trying to make sure that they have entrepreneurship models, they have technology uh, programs, they they start to learn the concepts from the 18s, okay? Of course, for that generation to be in the market, there are still a lot of fears, like 5 to 10 to 15, and to be probably the decisions, the decision makers, 15 to 20s, okay? But again, you need to solve at some point, and it's what's being done. So again, looking for what is being uh, then for the majority of the schools, I guess that we are in the right path, okay? Looking now about what can be done, I guess that if you can be able to convince hotel owners to spend a little bit more 
uh, of the total investments in technology, well, probably you'll be more successful with AI in the future because sometimes what I feel is that hotels don't have still the basis of technology. And since they don't understand the basis, sometimes they are not able to, under to understand AIs and all these rest of the concepts. So again, if you have a uh, hotel or if you are working on a hotel that has already a relevant number of rooms, probably you again, you need to have like a, a owner of this kind of projects. This is for me the most relevant. Of course, the owner of this project cannot be the owner or the, the GM because these two people are doing other things that are super important right uh, right now. So you need to have a person that is really your point of contact, the right person to implement. So again, first, I, I guess that uh, schools need to, to insert more and more technology and it's being done, check. Second part, making sure that you have uh, a champion, an internal champion also helps. Having people from different backgrounds for sure will help you. And for again, not having this kind of managing of technology in the higher uh, C levels because otherwise will not work. I guess that will be more or less these advices. If you are able to unlock that in your business, I guess that you will, <laughs> you will be for sure having success with the uh, AI. Yeah, and now the, the last question from Tiago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Isn't it a contradiction against sustainability to have more and more robots serving in your hotels? I guess it don't. Well, depends a lot about what what is the definition of the usage of the robots, right? Yeah. <laughs> because sure. talking about the, if you are talking about sustainability, sustainability is always about using more and more AI. It's as simple as going to the to the to the farm industry and seeing how AI is like improving a lot the water usage, the way and the right um, well uh, fields to insert the the right. Um, in terms of the farm, how you can uh, managing the, the sun and the rain. So I guess that going to that specific industry that are so different and if they are having success in the auto will not be that different because again, the robot, okay, we, we use more electricity, but probably could be more efficient as well um, in the way that is managed the electricity as well. And if you are using the robots to, to for example, managing the amount of coffees that is spent, the amount of drinks that is spent, etc. Probably you are being more sustainable because you have a, a lot of ways of controlling the usage of any kind of uh, thing. But again, the question could be like one hour to be replied because depends about where can we go or for where can we go if it's about experiences or, or if it's about uh, the usage of the resources. But for both, I don't believe that AI will be a block for the sustainability at all, actually. <laughs> okay, okay, amazing, amazing. And the uh, questions, I think they are all done uh, and we we are in the time. Thank you. Once again, thank you a lot for sharing your expertise and insights. <laughs> um, in conclusion, the impact of artificial intelligence on the travel industry is undeniable mm -hmm. and it's an exciting time for both. Mm -hmm. travelers and business alike. Uh, as we move forward, we can anticipate even more innovations and incentives that will continue to transform in the way to explore the world and to be attend to the to the next webinar uh, in 5th of October. OK, we will share the, the link to to register and thank you all for being part of this webinar. João, you are the the main piece uh, in this webinar uh, and we look forward to continue these web this is these webinar sessions and thank you a lot thank you thank, thank you for the invitation again thank you, thank you. bye bye, bye. <laughs>